Jesus warns us about the unclean spirits. Listen carefully to what Jesus says, because these spirits are very active in the last days. The Bible tells us the unclean spirits have two goals. First, to delay the day of their judgment by slowing the number of Gentiles being saved. Second, to give as much power as possible to the beast to have a chance to defeat Jesus Christ when he returns, but the beast will lose because Jesus is King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Revelation 19.20 but the beast was captured, and with it the false prophet, who had performed the signs on its behalf. With these signs he had deluded those who had received the mark of the beast and worshipped its image. The two of them were thrown alive into the fiery lake of burning sulfur. Now let's look at how the unclean spirits are terrified about the day of judgment and want to delay it if they could. When he arrived at the other side in the region of the Gadarenes, two demon-possessed men coming from the tombs met him. They were so violent that no one could pass that way. What do you want with us, son of God, they shouted. Have you come here to torture us before the appointed time? Matthew 8, 28-29. In Romans chapter 11, the Apostle Paul explains why the fullness of the Gentiles must come in before the end of time. I do not want you to be ignorant of this mystery, brothers and sisters, so that you may not be conceited. Israel has experienced a hardening in part until the full number of the Gentiles has come in, and in this way all Israel will be saved. As it is written, the Deliverer will come from Zion, he will turn godliness away from Jacob. And this is my covenant with them when I take away their sins. Romans 11, 25-27 When the fullness of the Gentiles is reached, meaning the full number of the saved in Jesus Christ, the door will be shut. Jesus tells us this in Matthew 25, verses 11-13. Later the others also came. Lord, Lord, they said, open the door for us. But he replied, truly I tell you, I don't know you. Therefore keep watch, because you do not know the day or the hour. Many people think our battle is against humans, but the Bible tells us our battle is against the unclean spirits. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Ephesians 6.12 Humans have no power over the unclean spirits, but they tremble at the name of Jesus Christ. Luke 10.17 The 72 returned with joy and said, Lord, even the demons submit to us in your name. The atoning sacrifice of Jesus along with his resurrection, defeated these powers at the cross. And having disarmed the powers and authorities, he made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them by the cross. Colossians 2:15. With Satan having lost at the cross, the unclean spirits had little choice but to prepare for the final battle. For this battle, they give as much power as possible to the spiritual beast. Jesus tells us about this in the book of Revelation. With Satan having lost, he transfers his power and authority to the beast. The beast I saw resembled a leopard, but had feet like those of a bear, and a mouth like that of a lion. The dragon gave the beast his power, and his throne, and great authority. Revelation 13.2 The beast is the spirit from the abyss. The beast is the proud one. This spirit desires to be God and has convinced half the world it is God. This spirit wants to be God, but is not. This is Allah of the Quran. We learn about this spirit in Daniel chapter 8, beginning with verse 10. It grew until it reached the host of the heavens, and it threw some of the starry hosts down to the earth and trampled them. It set itself up to be as great as the commander of the army of the Lord. It took away the daily sacrifice from the Lord, and his sanctuary was thrown down. 
He will cause deceit to prosper, and he will consider himself superior. When they feel secure, he will destroy many and take his stand against the prince of princes. Yet he will be destroyed, but not by human power. Not only did Satan give his power, authority, and throne to the beast, the ten kings, the ten demonic unclean spirit kings, also give their power and authority to the beast. We learn about this in Revelation chapter 17, verses 12 through 14. Verse 12, The ten horns you saw are ten kings who have not yet received a kingdom, but who for one hour will receive authority as kings along with the beast. Verse 13, They have one purpose and will give their power and authority to the beast. Verse 14, They will wage war against the Lamb, but the Lamb will triumph over them, because he is Lord of lords and King of kings, and with him will be his called, chosen, and faithful followers. Jesus reveals to us where the unclean spirits dwell and where they go to try to seek rest. This is in the desert wilderness. Matthew 12, 43, English Standard Version. When the unclean spirit has gone out of a person, it passes through waterless places seeking rest, but finds none. The New Living Translation says, when an evil spirit leaves a person, it goes into the desert seeking rest, but finding none. In the Quran, Allah describes Mecca as a barren valley with no tillable land. Quran 1437. O oh Lord, I have settled my children in a barren valley in which there is no tillable land near your sacred house, the Kaaba, so they may perform the prayer. Jesus reveals the harlot city of Mystery Babylon is in the desert wilderness, the same place the unclean spirits go. In Revelation 17.3, Looking at the various translation, you can see that the harlot woman of Revelation is in the desert wilderness. Christian Standard Bible. Then he carried me away in the spirit to a wilderness. Holman Christian Standard Bible. So he carried me away in the spirit to a desert. American Standard Version. And he carried me away in the spirit into a wilderness. Aramaic Bible in plain English. And he brought me to the wilderness contemporary English version. With the help of the Spirit, the angel took me into a desert. So you can see through these various translations, the wicked harlot city is in the desert wilderness. This is Mecca, not Rome. Jesus also makes clear that the harlot city is on seven mountains, not seven small hills. The tallest hill in Rome is 50 meters above the Tiber River. The mountains around Mecca are over a thousand meters high. Revelation 17:9. Here is the mind which has wisdom. The seven heads are seven mountains upon which the woman sits. Demons, as they cluster together, change their speech from singular to plural in the same sentence. Listen carefully to how Jesus reveals demonic speech in Luke chapter 4, verses 33 to 35. In the synagogue there was a man possessed by a demon, an impure spirit. He cried out at the top of his voice, Go away! What do you want with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. Be quiet, Jesus said sternly, come out of him. Then the demon threw the man down before all of them and came out without injuring him. Notice how the demon starts by saying he, then he says us, then he says us again, and then he says I. Singular to plural, plural to singular. This is a hallmark of demonic speech. We see an identical speech pattern in the Quran. Quran 21, 107, And we have sent you, O Muhammad, as a mercy to the worlds. Quran 37, 171, Our word has already gone forth to our servants, 
the messengers, Muhammad, Quran 19, 70 to 71. And then we shall know well all those most worthy to be cast in hell. There is not one of you but shall pass by hell. This is a decree which your Lord will fulfill. Quran 1972. Then we shall deliver those that feared Allah and leave the wrongdoers there on their knees. You again see how the singular God speaks in the plural, a hallmark of demonic speech. Here in the last days, the unclean spirits are running wild because they know their time is short. As people are now confused about their gender, they also move from singular to plural back to singular again with their gender-confused speech as demons have entered them. The unclean spirits are working frantically to slow the day of judgment by delaying the fullness of the Gentiles. For example, a statute to honor abortion in New York City. The unclean spirits promote billboards across the country to give false teaching about Jesus and false teaching about the wicked city in Mecca. This directly fulfills the revelation prophecies about the image of the beast and the false prophet. And the smoke of their torment will rise forever and ever. There will be no rest day or night for those that worship the beast and its image or for anyone who receives the mark of its name. Revelation 14, 11. Then I saw a second beast coming out of the earth. It had two horns like a lamb, but it spoke like a dragon. Revelation 13, 11. This means it will look like it is connected to Christ, but it is speaking for the unclean spirits. Who was the biblical Jesus? Was Jesus a prophet or was Jesus the Son of God? If Jesus was the Son of God, how could he die on the cross? How could God die? Was Jesus resurrected back to life? Who was the Son of Man that Daniel saw that would receive worship from all nations? Why did Daniel see that the Son of Man was worshipped? Was this because the Son of Man gave his life as a ransom for many? Mark 10, 43-45 Not so with you. Instead, whoever wants to become great among you must be your servant. And whoever wants to be first must be slave of all. For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. Was Jesus worshipped? Who sits at the right hand of the Father today? We will answer these based on what the Bible tells us is the truth of Jesus. In order to understand the biblical Jesus, we have to understand that the Bible is clear. There is only one God. There are many spirits who want to be God, but there is only one God. Isaiah 44 verses 6 and 8. This is what the Lord says, Israel's King and Redeemer, the Lord Almighty. I am the first and I am the last. Apart from me, there is no God. Do not tremble. Do not be afraid. Did I not proclaim this and foretell it long ago? You are my witnesses. Is there any God besides me? No, there is no other rock. I know not one. Likewise, we learn the same in Deuteronomy chapter 6. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. These commandments that I give you today are to be on your hearts. The next thing the Bible tells us is only God is good. Luke 18 verses 18 to 19. A certain ruler asked him, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Why do you call me good? Jesus answered. No one is good except God alone. The Bible tells us the power of God is so great that God can be in all places at the same time. This is called omnipresence. Jeremiah 23, 23 to 24. Am I only a God nearby, declares the Lord, and not a God far away? Who can hide in secret places so that I cannot see them, declares the Lord. Do not I fill heaven and earth, declares the Lord. 
The power of God is unlimited. Romans 11:33. Oh, the depth of the riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgments and how unfathomable his ways. Everything is possible with God. Matthew 19, 25 to 26. When the disciples heard this, they were greatly astonished and asked, who then can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, with man, this is impossible, but with God, all things are possible. The Bible tells us even more about Jesus, fully man and fully God. We learn this in Isaiah 9. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace, there will be no end. Here Isaiah is telling us about a child to be born, he will be a son, but yet he will be Mighty God, Everlasting Father. The power of God is unlimited. Isaiah, in chapter 53, tells us even more about this unique man-God combination. Yet it was the Lord's will to crush him and cause him to suffer. And though the Lord makes his life an offering for sin, he will see his offspring and prolong his days, and the will of the Lord will prosper in his hand. After he has suffered, he will see the light of life and be satisfied. And by his knowledge, my righteous servant will justify many, and he will bear their iniquities. Isaiah tells us even more in verse 12. Therefore, I will give him a portion among the great, and he will divide the spoils with the strong, because he poured out his life unto death and was numbered with the transgressors. For he bore the sin of many and made intercession for the transgressors. This explains why Daniel saw the Son of Man being led into the presence of the Ancient of Days, and people from all nations will worship him. Let's answer the next two questions. Did Jesus say he was God? Did Jesus say he was eternal? When Jesus came to Caesarea Philippi, he asked the question himself, Who do you say I am? Matthew 16. When Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do people say the Son of Man is? They replied, Some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and still others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. But what about you, he asked, Who do you say I am? Simon Peter answered, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. Jesus replied, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by flesh and blood, but by my Father in heaven. In Exodus 3.14, God tells Moses his name is I Am. Jesus uses the same name. John chapter 8. Jesus replied, If I glorify myself, my glory means nothing. My Father, whom you claim is your God, is the one who glorifies me. Though you do not know him, I know him. If I said I did not, I would be a liar like you, but I do know him and obey his word. Your father Abraham rejoiced at the thought of seeing my day. He saw it and was glad. You are not yet fifty years old, they said to him, and you have seen Abraham? Very truly I tell you, Jesus answered, before Abraham was born, I am. At this they picked up stones to stone him, but Jesus hid himself slipping away from the temple grounds. Why did they want to stone him? Because by using the words, I am, Jesus was claiming to be eternal and to be God. Since Jesus was perfect, he only had to say this once. But Jesus says it again in Revelation 22. Look, I am coming soon. My reward is with me, and I will give to each person according to what they have done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Jesus is eternal. Jesus and the Father are one. Yes, Jesus is fully man and fully God, the miracle of God, God being able to be present in all places at all times, God's love 
to save mankind from their sins. Yet Jesus has enemies, and Jesus sits at the right hand of the Father until all enemies will be under his feet. The chief enemy of Jesus is the Antichrist, the spirit that wants to be God but is not, Allah of the Quran why the Antichrist must deny that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh. Why must the Antichrist give Jesus Christ a new name? The Bible in English calls the Savior of the world Jesus, or in Hebrew, Yeshua. In Arabic, it should be Yeshua. Why then does the Quran call Jesus Issa? We are told in Matthew chapter 1 verse 21, the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph and said, She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. Why then did the demonic spirit of the Quran desire to give Jesus a different name? The Arabic for Jesus, Yeshua, Yeshua, is completely different from the Arabic for Issa. Issa is a brand new word that never existed before the Quran was written in the Arabic language. While all Muslims and most Christians think Jesus is prominently mentioned in the Quran, the descriptions of Issa in the Quran have no bearing on the true Jesus, the Son of God, the risen Messiah. In fact, the Quran exists only to take away the atoning sacrifice of Jesus. This is the fulfillment of Daniel 9.27, when the prince who is to come will take away the sacrifice and the oblation. The only sacrifice that matters to God is the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. Allah of the Quran takes away the atoning sacrifice of Jesus and renames him Issa. Issa in the Quran is a false story from a demonic spirit that lies about Jesus. The Quran says God does not offer unconditional love. Issa is not the son of God. Issa is not your mediator. Issa does not carry your burdens. Issa is not the word of God that became flesh. Issa was not crucified for your sins. Issa was not raised from the dead. All of these things take away the atoning sacrifice of Jesus, the sacrifice and oblation that matters to God. In contrast, the real Jesus of the Bible is vastly different. God does offer unconditional love. Jesus is the Son of God. Jesus is your mediator. Jesus does carry your burdens. Jesus is the Word of God that became flesh. Jesus was crucified for your sins, and Jesus was raised from the dead. When you understand how afraid Allah is of the true Jesus, you can see why he had to rename him Issa. We learn this from Philippians chapter 2, verses 5 through 11. In your relationships with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus, who, being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. Therefore God exalted him to the highest place, and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. This passage in Philippians makes it very clear why Allah had to give a new name to Jesus, because at the name of Jesus every knee would bow, including Allah, since Allah desires to be worshipped, but is not God, he cannot say the name of Jesus, and instead calls him Issa. Ask yourself this important question. Is the sacrifice of Jesus the most important thing in your life? Remember what we learned in Philippians. Jesus left his heavenly realm to come to earth to save you while you were still a sinner. There is one more thing you should know. 
Jesus fulfilled 351 Old Testament prophecies. The chances that this is random is simply impossible.